Welcome to the last part of the Elevating E-Commerce series. Today, we're going to tie everything together and I'm going to show you all of the steps that we talked about in the previous lessons in real world examples. We are going to take what you know about e-commerce and what you know about your own e-commerce store and we're going to start transforming. We're going to start molding it into a different fashion because you're going to be able to break away, quote unquote, the shackles of how traditional e-commerce is set up and created. And you're going to start seeing different layers from top companies that actually are already utilizing these types of methods. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Let's run through a few examples that we've discussed in this course in the real world and from big companies too. Because when I go through and I tell you about amplifying your pitch, hooking your customer, you know, that seems fine until you try to go and actually implement it in the real world. It's very hard to kind of reconfigure your mind to understand what that might look like or what that might mean when you're so used to seeing a specific type of e-commerce template, right? If everybody follows the same e-commerce template as a much smaller seller than the top Fortune 100 company, well, then it becomes, it, it gets very hard to, to see things from a different angle. And so in this first example right here, I want to show you what Apple does to hook people into their pages. Now, what most people don't realize is that the apple.com website, it's an e-commerce store, but it's configured in such a way where you don't even realize that you're shopping e-commerce. It, it feels so different, it feels so natural. There's specific pages that exist on this e-commerce store that make it feel like you're actually going through a journey, you're going through a process. And in the previous video, we looked at the home pages of Home Depot and Apple. And so you saw the amazingly stark differences in contrast that exist between those two companies. Now, once again, we, we, weren't, we weren't going against Home Depot, but we were displaying how things could be better laid out or some of the things where they clearly lacked, um, clearly lacked some, some important design elements that could make things easier to read, make things easier to understand. Instead, we try to reduce distractions. We try to make things very clear. We try to give people a very solid line to follow, a very solid path to follow so that they don't get confused and they don't drop off the page. Because that's really the biggest thing that you have to worry about as a website owner. It's like, I don't want people to drop off my pages. I want people to continue through the storyline. I want people to continue through their journey. And the Apple Store does a great job at that. And so when you when you click on iPad, you land on this page. And on this page, you see right away, there's a way to amplify this, the hook, right? There's a way to amplify the pitch. It gives people an instant reason why they should be even looking at this product in the first place. Now, now take in, in stark contrast a regular e-commerce site. When you land on a product page on a regular e-commerce site, what do you see? You see the title, you see a product image, and then you see a short description and you see the price. Look at how different this is. This is what I call a pre-sale page. This page is actually going through all the different things that this iPad can do. And so when the user is expecting to buy something, they're actually going through what some would call a direct marketing sales letter. And I know it's very confusing for people in the e-commerce space to, to try to resemble things in a direct marketing way. And the same thing for direct marketing, trying to resemble things in an e-commerce way. But as the world continues to evolve, you have to see that there is a fusion that is starting to exist between those two different types of marketing formats. And as you go down this page, you continue to see that they keep upping and upping the way they sell their actual products. They, they have huge showcases of things. They give full explanations of why this is useful. They, they give reasons that the person should actually buy this product. If they're trying to comparison shop, who do you think is going to win out on top, right? Like, is it going to be an iPad or is it going to be a different type of tablet? You go to a different website. It's not, it's not going to showcase those products in the same manner that this is. And because they're not doing that, you have an upper hand when you're actually showcasing your products if you started formatting it in this manner. Now, I'm not saying that for your first step 
after this course, you should go and completely rebuild your whole website. I'm not saying you should do that. That's a, that's a huge project. But what you should do is think about how do I start reformatting the existing pages that I have in order to actually, you know, amplify the pitch, amplify the hook, get those customers interested and pique their curiosity and show them what they're missing if they don't buy this product. Like there's, there's so much going on here. And it's, it's look at all the white space, look at how everything exists. There's a lot, it's very easy to follow the screen, right? They even use proper accentuation of, of uh, movable elements, which are very hard to do, by the way. A lot of people will just put in a bunch of elements that can move around the page or, or come in and come out. It's very tricky to do that. And if you don't have a, a degree in, 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 graphic design and how that kind of stuff should work i highly recommend staying away from it for now because it's much easier to just follow white space for a user who's reading through the page and so when things are laid out in a very clean and consistent manner it's a lot easier to once again see what you're reading and continue to follow down that trajectory so what's interesting here is you can sell you can tell that this is a pre-sale page because there's a thing at the top there's this ipad bar right it's and then you you can click on it and you, and you you see different things about that same product and so they sell you in different ways they sell you in different uh in different manners from different angles and why do they do that because they know that when someone is shopping for one of these products there's they could be they could come from a variety of different demographics they could come from a variety of different professions and so this is why they they have so many different ways to present their product that it's hard for any single person to say that this is not for them right if you can appeal to architects if you can appeal to appeal to artists if you can appeal to writers then you you start to you start to chip away at the people who who um don't see your product as a proper fit for them and this is very very important and what this is the reason why i try to stay away from short descriptors for products on e-commerce sites. Because if you can actually lay out a consistent format for a prospect or a customer to follow when it comes to actually shopping your products, well, you you give people a reason, a stronger intention to actually buy, you educate them. Like if I didn't know that I can run multiple apps at once and I was like, oh, I need a laptop. This section right here tells me that I can do that, right? I just learned something new. If I can, if I didn't know that I can share files between different iCloud devices, like my laptop and my phone, now I know that, right? And so it, it, you're slowly chipping away and you're increasing people's education. You're increasing the trust that they have with you because they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know this product could do all these things. And if you have a product that you've been selling for a long time, you have a lot of customer feedback. You have a lot of different ways that customers actually apply your product, right? And so you can actually present that information to new prospects and you can chip away at demographics and be like, hey, this product is for you. Hey, this product is for you too. You showcase it in different angles. You don't have to explicitly state that, you know, this product works for this, this, and this, but you can give it to them in a value-based format through education to show that, hey, this product works like this, and this product works like this, and this product has helped this person do this, et cetera, et cetera. And so let's look at the buy button because then you start to see, oh wait, this is an e-commerce site, right? Look at how this page is resembled. This page looks a lot more like your conventional e-commerce site. But when you click on iPad up here, the first page that they send you to is not that page. They do not send you to this page right here they send you to a different page that lets you actually learn about the ipad a little bit it showcases it. this is more like a category page and so you you have to think about what these little panels are as as um icons to those specific product pages so once again let's let's click on the ipad right here it doesn't take us to that buy now page it doesn't take us to that page where we can select our colors and everything it first takes us to this pre-sale page that gives us value, that gives us a hook, that gives us a reason to amplify our meaning between us and this product. It shows you how this product works for people. It shows you what this product can do. 
it shows you all the different um, technological aspects of it that you have a camera in the front and you have a camera in the back and you have all these other different items. This is why these types of pages are so powerful. They set the context for a user who's looking to purchase something. And when you start looking at your e-commerce site today, do it from that same manner. How can I adjust things? What can I do to completely change up the format of how my e-commerce product pages are presented? Because when I click on a product on your website, I want you to lead me through an educational process where I can actually learn about things that are very helpful for me as a person who might be shopping between a couple different products. And the moment you start shifting your perspective on this is the moment your e-commerce site is actually going to elevate. It's going to amplify. It's going to take it to the next level. Let's look at another uh, Apple product. So this one's a lot more dynamic and I don't expect anybody to understand how this type of setup works. But if you are curious as to how they do these kinds of things, they basically uh, take a movie format of this. They, they render it, turn it into a movie, and then they separate that into frames. And then each time you scroll down the page, it shows you a different frame of that movie. So it's, it's really just illusion. Like I, I always tell people web design is 50% illusion because you, you're doing things that seem magical on the screen, but in reality, it's, it's a, it's just, you know, some sort of simple workaround, some sort of simple tweak that makes it function like that because um, web pages, they're not, they're not uh, static elements. They're not, they're, they're very multi-dimensional elements. Um, and so there's a lot that you can do with it. And you also have to consider that people have different screen sizes. People have different ways things function. And so we want to make sure that this all works properly. Once again, we talked last time about how, how when you have proper web design elements included, you're able to naturally increase and decrease the screen, the size, and it changes it based on that perspective. And that's exactly what we always do when we build out e-commerce sites, because we understand that people are shopping from different products or people are shopping from different uh, devices. Some people shop on their phones, some people shop on their desktops, some people shop on their iPads. And so those are important things to consider. But just like that iPad screen, this it was not a fluke. It's the same thing here. They showcase to you why why they sh you should be buying this AirPod. Why is this AirPod Pro better than their competitors? Why is the AirPod Pro better than their other AirPods? And so this is not this is not you just clicking on AirPod Pros and then taking you to this sh buy now screen. This is how most e-commerce sites are set up, you know. And so we we kind of just want to stay. We want to think outside the box and think of different ways where, hey, how do we amplify our product offering? How do we make it so that people understand that when they click onto one of our products from a category or from the shop all page, they can start seeing things that, um, they can start seeing things that, that really resonate with, with, with the customer, with the prospect and show them that, hey, let, let us guide you through this educational flow let us guide you through this process where you can actually learn what our product does and why our product is better than your competitors. Because I can guarantee you one thing, your competitors, they're not doing this. They are not creating these types of pages. They are not reformatting their e-commerce site in order to actually present data and information in a way that lets a person educate themselves as they go through the page. And so, if you if you want to get some inspiration, just look at some of the ways Apple's Apple is setting these things up. They are a perfect example of a fusion website where they take direct marketing elements on an e-commerce store and they amplify them and they and they bring them together in order to actually teach people the way people are expected to be taught. Right? This is how we learn about stuff. This is why they have such a crazy following. They are able to explain their products very clearly. That gives them an author authority view on the market. And so I want to give you one more example before we wrap this up. Um, and this is Hermes. And I want to just show this because I, when I came across this, I thought this was really cool. Um, and this is something that anybody can do right away with their e-commerce site, um, and especially on product pages. If you have any basic product pages, you can do, you, you can put videos into those product pages. Like that's the first easiest step that you can do, right? Without the hooks, without the, uh, 
without showcasing value, without giving people more of a direct marketing style to, and approach to speak to them. But what I really liked is this. It shows how the product is being made. I think this is extremely undervalued. And this is especially true for those companies out there, those e-commerce stores out there that actually build their own products. If you're just buying things from China and then you're just selling them for, for a markup, you know, that's obviously very different than somebody who's who's handcrafting leather goods or, you know, creating clothing or creating their own um, technological advances. But if you are in the opportunity to actually build these things yourself, you have your own factory, you have your own warehouse where you build these things, doing stuff like this is a great way to amplify your authority in the market. And you mix this kind of production right here where you show people how things are made, you mix that with a little bit of a pre-sale page where you can actually give them hooks and values and explain the process behind things and show them how it has helped people and how people utilize your product, you take your you take your brand to a very different level because the next time a new prospect or even an existing customer goes onto your website to learn about a product, they're gonna be they're gonna be given such a different array of information to where they're like, oh, this company really knows what they're talking about. And so this is just a few different examples. There's Examples like this all over the web, but you have to look for them because most companies fall into this um, this regular e-commerce templating uh, mindset where they're like, this is how e-commerce works. This is how e-commerce is done. We're not going to mess around with it. We're not going to change anything up. We're not going to test things. We're just going to do things the way uh, this theme, this theme company told us to do it. And so I today advise you as we kind of near the end of this course to think differently, to try different things. Take one of your existing products and change it up. Give people reason, give people value, give people hook, amplify the reason that they should actually purchase your product. Make yourself an authority in that brand. Show them how the product is being made and then test it and then see if it works. Then see if you make a difference, right? So let's wrap this up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see you right back um, in front of the camera, but I hope those three examples helped. These these uh, these examples can be found all over the internet. And now that you understand what we're talking about, when we're talking about amplifying your pitch, hooking your customer, creating a pre-sale page, fusing direct marketing and e-commerce together, you have clear examples of what you should be doing and what you should be looking for. If you're familiar with the way your e-commerce website is set up right now, after seeing those examples, all of a sudden, I'm pretty sure you started getting your wheels spinning real fast. All of a sudden, you can see how these pages are sorted out, how they're laid out in different order. When people go to shop a product, when people go to shop a category, they don't see what you usually expect to see on an e-commerce site, right? And, and this is stuff that's been tested. This is tried and true. And this has been tested across a lot of different industries, but because of the way e-commerce has commoditized over the years. It's it's come down to a very single point where this is how things are made. This is just how things work. And today, I hope you saw how you can break away from that and, and start to reconfigure what it means to actually run an e-commerce site, what it means to configure information on your actual website so that when customers go and shop your product and learn about your product, they're not just following the same maze that every other e-commerce store, every other competitor that you have utilizes. And so with that said, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of different technological ways to approach this. Um, I highly recommend starting with the very simple stuff. Look at your regular product pages right now and look at how you can change up the information. Look at how you can change the way the product is being served to the customer. Change how you educate them. Think about your home pages. Think about your other pages. Where are you leading these people to? This field is very open for you to play and explore it. And now that you have a few examples to work from, you can actually start doing that. Now, when you're ready to take a bigger step, when you're ready to take things to the next level and you're like, okay, let's set up some of these real pages. How should we figure out this content? How should we configure this stuff? How do we utilize the testimonials of our customers in a more proficient way that gives them the ability to showcase how this product has helped that customer to other prospects that could be shopping your pages? 
Once you're ready to do that, let me know because I'm here to help you out. I work on e-commerce sites all day long. This is the reason why I can see so vividly into this because I understand how everything is structured along the way, how information should be laid out, how content flows, how the pages should work. Now, if you like this video, please subscribe and share this with another e-commerce store owner, especially if you have a lot of friends in the industry. It really helps my channel because I'm just starting to grow and I want to get more amazing information like this out to you as soon as I can. My name is Rich AK and I run a company called AK Growth where I help build and scale e-commerce businesses for other e-commerce business owners just like yourself. And if you like this, make sure to go watch this course again. We go over all this information and really listen to what I say. And if you have questions for me, leave them down in the comments. You can also always reach out to me directly and I'll try to help you in any way that I can. Anyways, this is it for now. I really appreciate you going through the Elevating E-Commerce course. Um, once again, share this with someone that you know who can, this can help and maybe we can start to shift what we perceive as e-commerce as we move forward. Thanks so much and have a great day.